Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, January 28, 2022. Control measures against COVID-19 infections in the island's prisons have been strengthened by the procurement of 500 self-testing kits for the Department of Correctional Services, DCS. State Minister of National Security Xavier Main handed over the kits during a ceremony at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center yesterday. He says the kits will play a big role in preventing the spread of COVID as it will allow for rapid testing once persons are suspected of carrying the virus. I know this will go a far way. It will be of significant aid in your efforts, your fight and your response um, against COVID-19 within your correctional facilities. Pointing out that there are 94 active cases in the inmate population and 24 staff members out with the infection, the state minister commended the DCS staff for their work in controlling the virus. He says work is ongoing to improve the health of inmates and to facilitate rehabilitation across the system so they can become productive citizens when they exit the correctional facilities. In other news, Minister of Finance Dr. Nigel Clark says having a coherent policy to withstand economic shocks must be the norm for Jamaica in order for the country to be able to recover quickly and improve the standard of living for persons. The statement comes as the country's economy is reportedly bouncing back from the depth of the COVID-19 pandemic where it contracted by 10% in 2020. We are vulnerable to a variety of economic shocks and that is why uh, economic resilience and resilience in policy making is even more important for us. Dr. Clark was speaking on day two of the 17th Jamaica Stock Exchange Regional Investments and the Capital Markets Conference. He says one of the positives of the recovery process is being able to maintain employment and facilitate job creation. Jobs were higher in October 2021 than July 2021 by several thousand. And if you compare October 2021 with October 2020, they were higher by 80,000. So jobs has continued to grow quarter by quarter to the point that the unemployment rate for October is the lowest in the history of Jamaica. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the time is right to focus more on future industries that will be relevant in this fourth industrial revolution. He made the pitch to business leaders and entrepreneurs at the 17th Jamaica Stock Exchange Regional Investment and Capital Markets Conference on Tuesday. According to the Prime Minister, in order for Jamaica not to be left behind, our industries must leapfrog to meet the demands of the new world economy with rapidly changing technology that will exist within the next decade. We must bring new ideas and technologies to expand and increase efficiency of our traditional industries. We must also create and invest in the industries of the future to diversify our industrial and productive base. We need to accelerate our investment in our capital markets. We need to accelerate our investment in education to create that innovative class of citizens and workers. Prime Minister Holness says government has been taking decisive steps towards achieving the country's vision of becoming a digital society and making Jamaica the technology hub of innovation and the Silicon Valley of the region. 2022 has been declared the year of early childhood development by Governor General Sir Patrick Allen. Education Minister Favel Williams says it's a reflection of the importance of early childhood education to citizens' overall development. Within this context, we have been reviewing the existing legislation relating to young children, including the Early Childhood Commission Act 2003 and the Early Childhood Act and Regulations 2005 and other relevant legislation to ensure a comprehensive legislative framework is provided to meet the needs of young children. During Tuesday's launch, which was hosted by the Early Childhood Commission, Executive Director of the ECC, Carlene de Grasse Deslandes, said the Commission would be promoting several activities geared towards children learning through play. These include and are not limited to National Play Day, February 1, and February being designated Play Month. The other activities during the year are the ECC's annual Professional Development Institute, where we focus on capacity building and equipping our practitioners with the right tools. Learning Environment Month, 
where we focus on creating appropriate learning environments. Our community flex, which will see our staff share with parents the importance of the first 1,000 days of life. And finally, Jamaica has lost one of its icons of media and culture, Kerry Fitzwilliam Robinson. The journalist, author, playwright, and historian reportedly passed away at his St. Andrew home yesterday at the age of 97. Robinson is well known as the voice of the long-running television program, Hill and Gully Ride. He's an alumnus of Calabar High School and Howard University. His extensive work in broadcasting included stints at The Gleaner, Radio Jamaica, and the government's public relations office, now the Jamaica Information Service. He was also general manager of the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, JBC, until 1987. Kerry Robinson is the author of a number of works, including The Fighting Maroons of Jamaica, The Iron Thorn, and Memoirs of a Jamaican Media Man. He was conferred with the Order of Distinction, Commander Class, and the Silver Musgrave Medal. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.